Ian has strengthened back into a Category 1 hurricane Thursday evening, according to the National Hurricane Center. The storm is expected to bring hurricane force winds to the South Carolina coast early Friday, the NHC reports. As of 5.30 p.m. Thursday, Ian was 310 miles southeast of Myrtle Beach, traveling 10 miles per hour and with winds of 75 miles per hour, according to the National Weather Service. Communities along the Grand Strand are holding out to see what Hurricane Ian will bring to the area. Some vendor tents and businesses were closed in Surfside Beach, Garden City Beach and Moodles Inlet as the Myrtle Beach Bike Week Fall Rally is underway. And biker hotspots such as Spokes and Bones, the Beaver Bar, Suck Bang Blow and Myrtle Beach Harley-Davidson had a few motorcycles in the parking lots. In Garden City, small groups of people made their way to the shore to catch a glimpse of what the hurricane was churning up in the Atlantic. Further north in Myrtle Beach, surfers paddled in the ocean to challenge hurricane Ian swells. Jason Reynolds was out with friends Thursday afternoon around 65th Avenue North, the Wisconsin native moved to the area four years ago and tries to surf whenever he can, even in a tropical systems. There's always the risk of drowning that adds to it, he said of the thrill that comes with surfing during a hurricane. While the risk of dangerous seas rises as the hurricane approaches the Grand Strand, the waves weren't rough enough early Thursday afternoon for Reynolds and his friends to not enter the water. It's kinda choppy but not too bad. The current is moving pretty hard but not horribly hard, Reynolds said. A double red flag warning was issued for both Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach Thursday morning. The double red flag warns people not to swim. Afternoon update, Horrid County, including its coast, remains under a hurricane warning as Tropical Storm Ian makes its way towards South Carolina. The storm is currently moving 9 miles per hour, with maximum sustained winds of 70 miles per hour, the National Hurricane Center reports. The storm is forecast to make landfall in the Charleston area Friday, forecasters say. Horry County may see a storm surge of 3 to 4 feet, said National Weather Service meteorologist John Quagliariello. This forecast could change if the path of the storm shifts, he added. Flash flooding is also possible due to heavy rainfall. Tropical storm force winds will develop later Thursday along the coast and then spread inland through Friday morning, Quagliariello said. Wind gusts could reach 60 miles per hour along the coast, he said, and people should prepare for power outages. Conditions are expected to improve late Friday and into Saturday. Ian could be the first hurricane to make landfall in South Carolina since Hurricane Matthew in 2016, Quagliariello said. Kim Stenson, the South Carolina Emergency Management Director, offered several tips during an afternoon press conference with South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster. including having ways to get emergency information, making sure you have backup batteries and he urged people to avoid driving through flooded areas. This is not just a coastal event, Stenson said. We expect this storm to impact all of South Carolina over the next couple of days. Horry County government offices and the city of Myrtle Beach offices are closed Friday due to inclement weather from Tropical Storm Ian, according to news releases. Morning update. Ian is leaving Florida as a tropical storm after it caused widespread damage as a major Category 4 hurricane and is now headed toward the Atlantic on Thursday morning, according to the National Hurricane Center. Conditions across Horry County remain overcast as the area prepares to receive multiple inches of rainfall, which is forecast to begin later in the day Thursday and last into Saturday. The South Carolina Emergency Management Division is urging people to finalize their storm preparations Thursday as forecasters now believe Ian could make landfall in Charleston as a Category 1 hurricane.
The 11 a.m. update from the National Weather Service reports Ian is 360 miles south slash southwest of Myrtle Beach. The storm is moving at 9 miles per hour, with maximum sustained winds of 70 and mph, the NHC reports. Horry County government and the city of Conway have declared a state of emergency. This means the governments are functioning in a heightened state of awareness as the storm approaches. The Horry County coast, which includes Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach and Surfside, remains under hurricane and storm surge warnings until further notice. A hurricane warning means hurricane force winds are forecast in the area within the next 36 hours and a storm surge warning means there is a danger of life-threatening inundation that could come from rising water moving inland, according to the NWS. Due to the warnings, the cities of Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach have raised double red flags. Swimming in the ocean is prohibited at this time because of a high rip current risk. Just because no evacuations will be ordered doesn't mean Horry County residents should take the storm lightly, said Randy Webster, the county's emergency management director. He urged residents to be prepared for heavy rains, severe coastal flooding and the possibility of tornadoes. This isn't a cakewalk, he said, it's a dangerous situation and we need folks to make sure, to understand, don't go driving around barricades. Don't be out in it if you don't need to be. It's a serious event or we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. Cherry Grove side. It's starting to get a little. Speaking to reporters Thursday morning, Webster said officials expect winds of 20 to 30 miles per hour to pick up later today and continue through Friday. Flash flooding is a risk countywide because of the downpours, and he's particularly concerned about coastal flooding during high tide. Coastal flooding's going to be a big deal, he said. It's going on now and it will continue to get worse. Preparing for the storm has been a challenge for local officials because of its changing track. It's been a little bit different, Webster said. This has been a very difficult storm for the Hurricane Center to predict where this is going and how bad it's going to be here. It's not like it's directly coming to us initially off the Atlantic. There's been a lot of wondering what's really going to happen. Regardless of how severe the impacts are, Webster said some storm guidance never changes. Don't drive around barricades. Don't use generators indoors and avoid unnecessary trips until the weather clears. Stay off the streets tomorrow as much as possible, he said. Use common sense and just ride thing out. Let's hope it's over within 24 hours and we see a better day Saturday.